First round of the DVV Trophy, um, notably absent was Matthew Vanderpool. Uh, he seems to have decided to spot everybody five minutes in the GC again this year. Uh, we know he can do it. But uh, let's rip into the, uh, the, the women's race. Yeah, women's race. Uh, off the bat, it was the Italians. Alice Arzufi and Eva Lechner, they stormed up the Kopenberg. And if you aren't familiar with the Kopenberg, if you're wondering what's the Kopenberg, you should go to our website where we have some videos about all of the iconic bergs in Belgium. The Kopenberg being, of course, one of the hardest, most infamous, and most problematic bergs in the Tour of Flanders. Anyways, so side note, check that out if you are unfamiliar. Otherwise, women's race, Italian duo, hot out the gates up this hill. Looks like about a, a more than five second gap to Ava Lechner. Lechner just blasted off the start line. And it looks like she's taking our Zufi with her. And that looks like Anna Kay quickly trying to chase them down. Yeah, quickly out the gates. And then Yara Kostelein, who was holding absolutely magnificent form from her win at the Super Prestige the weekend before, uh, really ripped into the lead. Uh, and despite being chased by her teammate, Anna Marie Wurst, who's also been a really dominant rider this, this year, uh, just was didn't put a foot wrong on a really tough, slippery, gnarly uh, course. We were here in the studio. If you can go back and watch the replay of that, uh, Ian and Michael and myself were here in the studio. We did a great show around that. Go check that out I'll here on Flow Bikes. But Yara Kastelein really wrote a dominant performance. Anna Marie Wars has been phenomenal this year uh, and just couldn't quite bring her back. Yeah, I personally was really surprised to see Anna Marie Wurst just really, she... She rode a great race, but uh, her chase just wasn't good enough. She could not peg back this roundabout. Like It seemed like it was always 10 to 20 seconds to Yara Castelline, and that was just a bridge too far for Anne-Marie Wurst. She rode an impeccable race for second, but the ride of the day was really Castelline, who just hit out early. She went over that uh, Italian duo of Arzufi and Lechner and was never seen from again. It was, at the end of the day, an all 7-7 seven, seven women's team podium. Yeah, so at the end of the day, uh, Arzufi uh, distanced Lechner and rounded out the podium for 7-7-7. Seven, seven, seven. And really, even we saw in the men's race, that course was so slippery and so technical, there was really a speed limit. Uh, we've seen Worst as a phenomenal bike handler. She has a very loose riding style, um, but it just you can't take big risks on the course. It's that technical. Um, it's high consequence, high risk, high reward. Um, but a dominant performance from the 777 team, who has really been the team of the year in the elite women's race. Yeah, fantastic racing from them. Going over to the men's race, we saw shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder racing from Tom Pidcock and Ellie Iserbit. These are, of course, uh, kind of the new guns on the elite men's scene. They were rivals all through the U23 ranks. They have now graduated into the elites. Ellie Iserbit, the Belgian, has been pretty impeccable this uh, season. He's won every World Cup. He's only he's only lost one race uh, leading into Copenburg Cross, and he did seem to be the strongest on the day. Tom Pidcock is coming off of the road season. He had to uh, take a little bit of time to recover after the road season, so he is not, uh, he has not yet solidified a front row call-up at any cyclocross races, so these are uh, back uh, second row, third row starts are really hurting him, especially when you start the race at the bottom of the Copenberg. But uh, Tom Paycock, this is the best race we've seen from him thus far this season. He did get up and really challenge Isabeth throughout the entire race. Yeah, we, we really saw a really great preview. And like I said, if you didn't watch it, go back and watch again. Uh, we saw a preview of what we're going to see a lot of over the next few years. This is the this is the budding uh, Vanderpool versus Van Aert uh, rivalry. These guys are very familiar with each other racing wise. Their styles are different. Ezra Bitt obviously has been the man of the cross season. He's riding at another level, but he's almost surgical in the way he goes about the course. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He's very he rides with a lot of amplitude. He's out of the, every corner. He's on the on the pedals, out of the saddle, accelerating the bike, and that's just from the good form. But his style on the bike is very fast but very controlled and then you juxtapose that with Tom Pidcock who has been getting bad starts. Yes, some of that is his start position on the grid. Some of that is also that he just doesn't have that snap. He hasn't been racing. He didn't start his season very early. Uh, but Pidcock, loose riding style, uh, not afraid to take risk. We saw him at one point he, had, he was making time on that lower part of the descent at Copenburg and he almost put himself over the barriers. Uh, not afraid. So it's a really cool difference in these two riders that are going to be great rivals going forward and they're very, uh, the dichotomy of their riding styles. 
Yeah, uh, they do complement each other very well, and thrilling battles are going to continue coming from those two riders. Pidcock really was a joy to watch on the descent because it was this lower portion of the descent uh, of Co Copenburg Cross that was just Pidcock's bread and butter. That is where he could make up time on riders. That's where he could pass riders. And Ellie Iserbit, he was, he was just the strongest. Going up the Copenburg, you could tell that he just had the power. The one mistake that Pitcock made the entire race, and I, I don't even know if you could call it a mistake. It could possibly be attributed to not pitting when he should have, but he came into the bottom of the Copenburg with two laps to go and dropped his chain. He was standing uh, on the side of the road trying to get his bike back in working order for uh, about 10 seconds or so, and that let, to let Tom Pitcock back into the race. It looked like Ezra Bid was riding away with it up to that point. Uh, Pitcock put up a good fight in the closing uh, laps, but it was Ellie Ezerbeet. He just remained so calm under pressure, came back around Pitcock, and yeah. yeah. Ezerbeet was unflappably good in that final. He didn't panic. Um, for such a young rider showing so much maturity, uh, you didn't see him like trying to jump on the bike before the chain was back on. He calmly got it going. He struggled with it. The worst place in the whole course to get off your bike, at the bottom of that slippery, cobbled climb. You've ridden up that climb. It's hard in the dry and that was covered with slippery mud. Yeah, uh, honestly, I think on that day, a cyclocross bike is the only kind of bike that could have gotten up that climb. It is a nasty, nasty climb to ride on a road bicycle. Again, check out the videos that we have about that. If you have any questions about the Copenburg,